Well, we've been trying to do some clean, living off the land, clean eating, mm -hmm. clean eating. So if you followed us very much, you know we like to grow some microgreens, you know, during the year. And our strategy right now, because greens eating in the summertime can be a little bit of a problem. So mm -hmm. our strategy right now is we're planting three trays of microgreens per week. And we have three trays going, so at all times we have six. Right, so we have, we come off at three trays at a time as we did yesterday. And that is, seems to be enough for two people. For about a week. For about a week. Mm -hmm. So to ha always have fresh greens available, that seems to be the success for us. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Road by Road Gardening Show, the best dead gum gardening show on the internet, where we talk about gardening, a little bit of cooking, and growing your own food. Now sit back and enjoy. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Greg. I'm Sheila. Yep, and I want to just give you an update on some of the things that uh, we got going on on the microgreen category. Now, our, our show today is about fall pest control. We're going to dig in all into that and give you some insights here. Got some really important controls that we found last year. We did some experiment with yeah. you that I think you'll find interesting. But first of all, I want to give everybody an update on our microgreens. Okay. I planted some. Ashley, you planted these. That's I right. I did, yeah. yeah. All right, the first one here is a fun one yeah. right here. Now this one right here, folks, is sweet corn. That's Honey Select. Yeah, but it really didn't matter what okay. sweet corn it is, but you need to do a sweet corn. Evidently, you just you thought Honey Select would be a good one to do. No, I was looking at some that we had a lot of. And... Yeah, that's good, cool. We did this last year. Now, you're talking about a very, very interesting... We did Bodacious last year. Oh, man, was that not crazy? If you've never tasted this micro corn, you can do popcorn or sweet corn. It's actually sweet. Yeah, it, it'll get about... It looks like a miniature corn stalk mm -hmm. without the corn. However, there are some tricks you've got to do to grow it like this right here. It has to be yellow. And for it to be yellow, you have to grow it in the dark. If it hits sunlight for two or three hours, one, the yellow will turn green and it gets a different flavor to it. This not good. Not good. You want it the yellow, yellow. And you do that simply by growing in the dark. So we have this sprouting. So we will move this into a dark room today and keep it dark and as soon as it comes up, then we'll cut it. So if you didn't have a dark room, could you just cover it? Yeah, you could do this right here. And I'll probably, I just made a mess here. So you could turn your tray upside down to give you a temporary dark room. However, when that corn starts it's shooting, push it up, that's not yeah. going to be enough. I just made a mess. You did. Me. All right. If you want to do something fun, you will just be amazed at what that tastes like. Everybody that came in last year when I grew that, I had to make care about them, make them yeah. taste it because it just, your mind just, it's, it's a sweet flavor. It's like you're eating fresh corn kernels, yep. but it's green. Yep. All right, another one we got coming off here, and this one today will be moved. Uh, we'll move these probably underneath the light today. Maybe I'll turn them around, leave them in a dark room. I think I'll turn them around because this actually causes the plant to get a little leggy yeah, a little when taller. you put it in the dark, which is really what you and want. This is cantaloupe. Cantaloupe, which is also kind of a sweet flavor mm -hmm. to it as well. And you don't like cantaloupe. I don't like cantaloupe, but I love cantaloupe microgreens. But mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what you don't want. You don't want watermelon no, microgreens. We tried that last year, and it's an off flavor that's not good at all. But these cantaloupe microgreens have a fruity flavor to them, mm -hmm. which is very interesting. So mm -hmm. we'll spray them today. And let's go ahead and turn that upside down like that right now. You know when you guys plant your seedlings in trays and you don't get them underneath the grow light or in sunlight quick enough and the plants get leggy? Well, that's actually what we're trying to replicate somewhat with these microgreens. Is we want them to get a little bit leggy. But this one this morning, I went ahead and turned this one upside down to try to get a little leggy here. And that's what we're doing. And what's this one? This is radishes. Oh yeah, I did that too. Yep. So you can see here on the edge. Yes, they've grown since yesterday. Yep. And uh, these will be ready well, in a couple, probably three days, be ready to cut. Uh, this right here has caused them to, to sprout up and get a lower stem, which is advantageous when you go to cut them. Mm -hmm. But we need them to green up and leaf out. So we'll leave this on there for probably about mm, maybe another day. Then I'll take it off, get underneath the light, and you will be amazed how quick it turned from yellow 
to grain. You didn't bring the arugula I planted last week? I did not week. bring the arugula. Nope. Okay. Can we shoot this over out of the way? Maybe I'll put it here. And speaking of microgreens, this is what we harvested from those we showed last week. Mm -hmm. So we're looking, it's a 10 day turnaround, seems to be for us, 10 to 11 day turnaround from planting time to um, harvesting. Now what we did is we had peas, we had sunflowers, and we had broccoli, which broccoli is probably my favorite. And, and we arugula. mix it together and we put a little arugula in there because arugula has that strong flavor to it that you don't want to overpower with but mix some of that in with your mix is wonderful so i got you a few pecans so we take the microgreens we add pecans because i love pecans or walnuts or as we call in the south pecans pecans and then i fix some chicken salad now we actually had this meal last night and uh it is very good, and of course it's healthy for you. You're gonna have to load my, yeah, give me all that chicken salad. This is homemade chicken salad, by the way. With our peppers, our onions, mm -hmm. our eggs. Yep, the only thing that we have in this right here that we didn't raise here is the chicken. And we could have done that. We just hadn't killed any chickens left. Well, there you have it right there, folks. You're talking about clean, easy living. There it is. Chicken salad with microgreen salad. Good stuff. And the other I brought, another favorite we found in the last couple of weeks is you know? Yep. I do know. Peppers. Still, we love peppers. Um, and we've done a bunch on the grill. These I just did on top of the stove. And they're just blistered. And you leave the seed and everything in it. And you got this idea off of YouTube, did you? Yeah, I had, well, I blistered some when I canned some. Um, but for everybody out there that's got excess pepper, this is a great way to use them up. All right, you want me to start talking about? Yeah, let's show everybody how we eat these first. So what we do is we do some whole and we dip them in the dip. And we just eat up till around the top of the seed pod there and we leave the seed pod. Hmm. It's one of my new favorites. Mm -hmm. Easy. Full meal here. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about pest control. Yeah. So fall of the year, you will clean up your garden. You've pretty much been working on that this past week. I have and I've, I'm starting to get, I've got about all my fall crops in. When I say my fall crops, I'm talking about my corn, my warm season fall crops, not my brassicas. However, I have got some brassicas planted in the greenhouse growing mm -hmm. plants. Um, but the fall is a great time to garden, but your insect pressure can and usually is on most pests greater. Mm -hmm. Other things to do in fall is take a soil sample. Um, it's never a bad time to take a soil sample. Yeah, start planting, put your amendments in. Um, and we're going to talk about the fall pests today and how you can control them. And first we're going to go over some natural ways. So of course, control your weeds. Weed control is very important. Because there's sometimes is a host crop for our pests and we don't want to give them any safe haven right. place to live. Same thing, remove your debris because that's those pests stay in there. Especially white flies, but we'll touch on that a little bit later. A lot of you, if you have uh, overgrowth growing around the edge of your garden, it's a great place for those insects that move a lot, such as white flies, to harbor up. Mm -hmm. um, start with clean soil. So you can do all this to get your soil clean by disease resistant, pest resistant seed. Yeah, some. I'm not familiar with uh, anything, that's, that's any seed that is insect resistant, yeah. but disease resistant is a big one there. Beneficial insects and rotation and trap crops. Mm -hmm. Trap crops is the key there. That is one of the most underutilized controls in the vegetable garden, I think is, uh, is trap crops. 
That's delicious. Mm -hmm. I like the peppers. You know, that clean, good living is the way I maintain my physique. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Yeah, I have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're back on the... We're back on the eating, right? And we got to... Uh, and we do better with that in the fall. I guess we, we do better with the, the fall. potatoes. You know, the microgreen things... And look here, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. Sometimes we cycle in a cycle out of that. But it's something we should do 365 days out of the year. But when our spring garden comes in, we seem to come off of it. Mm -hmm. You know, if we have things growing outside that we can't harvest enough of, we seem to come off. And that's okay, as long as you're eating good out of the garden. But there are so many times out of the year that our food cycle with our outside garden just doesn't fulfill us. And we, we tend to go back to eating bad when we could just simply have the microgreen go us and... Yeah. Eat all the time. Let's make that a let's make that a goal. A goal. Mm -hmm. Early New Year's resolution. Yep. Aphids. Mm -hmm. Small body insects that suck the nutrient rich liquids out of the plants. Yep, so aphids are probably the most common garden insect out there. A lot of times when people are asking for identification on insects, they see aphids. The old timers used to call them lice. You remember oh, your grandma yeah, called them lice? Yeah. Especially on our turps and mustard, they call them. Uh, we got yeah, lice we on. We got lice on. Yep. I do. So they're probably the most common, and they're the easiest to control. They are a soft body insect, and just about any control will control them because they don't have any hard covering of them to protect them. Another thing about aphids too, a lot of times they will actually cycle out, or the industry term is called crash. They will crash on their own. But if you got a problem there. Uh, you probably need to take care of it. And the good thing is it doesn't take much to take care of them. Uh, you know, you've heard a lot of people using dish soap. Mm -hmm. It works fine on aphids. The, probably the best method is to use is a horticultural oil. The one we call, we got it's called, excuse me. It's called horticultural oil. That's probably one of the uh, the best methods to spray. You gotta get good coverage. But under those leaves. Under those leaves because that's where the aphids is hiding out. I don't know if I would ever recommend a synthetic or non-organic control for aphids because they're so easy to control, control. I think you should do it with an organic spray. Okay. Now, picking them off is just about, you can't hardly do it because there's too many underneath there. But don't stress out if you got an aphid problem because right. they are easy, easy to take care and of. And you'll know this because the leaves will be curled, mm -hmm. misshapen. And you just look underneath that yellow. leaf and they're everywhere. Yeah. Snails and slugs. Mm -hmm. Now this is most common under the lettuce and sweet room. Mm -hmm. They need moist environment. They need organic matter to feed up for. So if you're growing those lettuces that have those big heads on them, so there's a lot of shade and moisture underneath them, that's more likely where you're gonna have the snail problem. If you don't have a snail problem where you have an upright plant and there's plenty of air moving underneath mm -hmm. there most of the time, it's just simply... Uh, and they lay more eggs in the fall. Mm -hmm. So you have more problems in cool, the fall. Cool, humid weather, they love that. And you how know, do you get rid of them? Well, I'm going to tell you an old folk remedy that works. Take you a bowl, similar to this right here, and put you some beer in it. Yeah, I did that. Yep, and that'll trap them. I remember. Yep. We have a product called Sluggo that is a bait product that will work on them also. And DE will work on them if you sprinkle it around the base and that's diatomaceous earth. It will work on them as well. Okay. Cabbage. Cabbage looper is looper. probably, as far as worms go, especially on Nebraska's, is the most problematic. Uh, it and flea beetles, but as far as worm control, it is the most problematic pest that we have. We have major issues with them here in the south in the fall and the spring and the winter time. If you find all these irregular shaped holes yep. in your leaves. Or if you're walking through the garden and you see these white moths flying around, you know you're fixing yeah. to have a problem because they're laying eggs and those eggs are going to hatch out to the worms and they're going to be feeding on your plants. A proactive uh, program on this right here will help a lot. Spinosad BT. Keep in mind, BT is a stomach poison, so the worm has to ingest that. So you're going to see some damage before the BT starts to work. 
However, Spinosad has two modes. It has a contact mode and it also has an injection, injection mode such as the BT. But here where we live, if you're growing things in, in the fall of the year, you better have a program or you better have a way to control those because you will have them and they would be detrimental on your cabbage and other things. White flies. White flies can be a, a serious problem here in the south. And now, they are sap suckers. They're sap suckers and they're mobile. They fly around. They're really hard to control because it's hard to get the chemical on them. Now that being said, just, just about anything you spray, if you get it on, will kill them. They're easy to kill, but they're so mobile, they fly away when you walk out there. So it's hard to get the, the pest control on the actual uh, insect. And plus, they can reinfest pretty quick because they fly in. Now, one good thing about white fly control is we seem to not have near as much problem in wet years as we do dry years. Dry years, they're a lot worse than they are when we get plenty of rain. The rain just kind of keeps them beat down. I was talking to a guy yesterday that's in the industry, in the, in the agriculture industry, and him and I was talking. So far this year, we've seen very little white fly pressure, which is good. Mm -hmm. Because if we have a dry fall or end of our summer and we have a lot of white flies, it's nearly impossible to control them sometimes. And they can eat up our summer squashes, winter squashes, and our, our brassicas as well. And you want to spray for them late in the evening? Late in the evening, early in the morning. Horticulture oil, anything with just about. You don't dishwash the detergent will control them. Just got to get it on control, no, excuse me, spray everything on the plant, earn side up the leaves there. Good coverage is the key to controlling the white flies. And, and you're going to have to do it, schedule. You're gonna have to do it pretty often. What about yeah. sticky traps? Sticky traps work all right, but it's just not going to take, it's not going to take them out to the level you need to take them out at. Will it kill them? Will they get on them? Absolutely. But you're not going to get, you're not going to get the numbers out like you need to if you have a bad, bad problem with them. Thrips. Thrips are another one that move. I mean, they, they move out, not to the extent of the white flies do, but this is the one that spreads a lot of our viruses here. Yeah, they're with tiny these. flying insects with fringed wings. Yeah, and they, that picture's a little misleading. They're really small. Yeah, um, you'll they see, are sap-soaking insects. They are. You'll see a lot of damage. Peppers are notorious for thrip damage. Um, and you'll see those leaves crinkle up at the top. That's from, uh, from thrips. They're considered a vector. They spread diseases, so it's really important to try to control those. Um, there again, same thing that you would do with the white flies. A good spray program which you spray often to try to keep them under control keep the numbers down cut worms cut worms is probably one of the most aggravating ones for me i go out there and i plant a row of something other transplants and they all looking good and i go out there and i got two dead mm -hmm. i reach down there and look and they just cut off at the base of the soil there and laying over there and they was healthy yesterday so it's extremely aggravating so they start off as these moths, mm -hmm. and then the larva stage is what yep. gets your plants. Yep. Now, a couple of different methods. You can use something similar to our Bug Buster 2, which is a pyrethroid. You can spray that. Or actually, the DE, the diametaceous earth, which is pretty good on there, is because what it does, it kind of punctures that exoskeleton of the cutworm and uh, causes it to die. So if you know you're going to have a problem, it's not a bad idea to sprinkle that around to the base of your plant. You always want to treat around the base of your plant uh, if you got cut worms. If you've had a cut worm problem in the past, go ahead and do a pre-treatment on that to make sure that you control them. Flea beetles. Flea beetles is the things that eats mm -hmm. those little holes most often in your brassicas in the fall of the year. They eat those just look like a shotgun pattern. You shot them with a shotgun, these little holes everywhere. Uh, and they can be hard to control. Of course, some of your some of your products such as neem and spinosad, I'm not 100% sure about spinosad, but I know neem will, probably horticulture oil, will control them in the nymph stage. When they get to that adult stage where they got that hard covering on them, hard to control. You're going to have to move to a Bug Buster 2 product to control them at that point. Trapping is somewhat effective, but a trap crop we found last year is really effective against flea beetles. Flea beetles for us is one of the 
it's a bad one we face. You know, you can actually eat that kale or that broccoli or whatever, even though it's got those holes in the leaves, but we just don't want to. We don't like to eat those, those greens that have all those holes on. So something that we did last year that really worked well as far as controlling flea beetles is we used a trap crop. A trap crop is when you plant a crop specifically to bring the insects away from the desired plants in your garden and you give them a crop that they prefer to eat and you just let them eat on it and it brings them away from your desired plants and you sacrifice that crop. The one that works the best for us is a Chinese cabbage. Mm -hmm. For some reason or another, flea beetles love Chinese cabbage. So plant your row of those to the side and let the flea beetles just have at them, eat them. And if you want to, after they get to much on them real good, you can spray them and try to knock some of your populations down. In the raised bed, I just had one, like in the center of the raised bed, along with my kale and my broccoli. Mm -hmm. It did really well. Yep. Another thing too is these flea beetles overwinter into your soil. So there again, good housekeeping, keeping good cover crops planted in your soil, and not just letting that soil sit empty for weeks or months on the end will help control those overwintering flea beetles. So, yeah, flea beetles is a is a tough one. Okay. These peppers Sounds are delicious, good. aren't they? Yeah. You did good with these. You like those better than the grill? I believe I do. The yeah. stuff ones, we love stuff ones. Yeah. But this is so much easier. Hmm. Um. So let's move a Halsinator contest ends August 31st. Yeah, we're gonna be making a decision on the end. Who's got the biggest Halsinator tomato? So, you guys up north, remember to still send your pictures We had in. a comment that we needed to have a contest for up north because they were not gonna be through with theirs by August the 31st. Most of them will be, but maybe a few, yeah. But it's wrapping up the summer pretty long. It has to be pretty far up north. Yeah. So, yeah, you guys get your pictures in because we got some good entries for I don't even know what's the leading weight now. It's know. well over a pound. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. We got strawberries in. Yeah, we got strawberries, not in. I'm not in. We, we got I mean, pre order. So, pre -order. we got <laughs> strawberry in the 50 plug flat like we did last year. This year, we've increased the states that we're going to sell to all the way to Texas. We include you guys in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Texas this year. Channel strawberry, and I will tell you this much, to me, channel strawberry is the sweetest strawberry I have ever eaten out of the garden. I so agree. we got those on pre-sale now. Go to the website, go ahead and order yours. They come in 50 flat trays. You can order one, you can order two, you can order as many as you want. We had some people order a lot of them. Yeah. I've had, uh, I think I mentioned it on last week's show, the problem with the birds eating my strawberries. Yeah, that is a major problem. I had two people tell me I need to do some painted rocks that look like strawberries before the strawberries bloom, and the birds will start pecking on those rocks and realize it's not anything, and they'll leave them alone. Wow. I know. You gotta, we got to start painting strawberries. I know. Mm -hmm. I need some more, ro I need mm -hmm. some more rocks. Mm -hmm. Also, we got German white okay. uh, elephant garlic, on pre-sale mm -hmm. and then as of next week we've already procured our elephant garlic starting next week we'll do pre-sales on elephant garlic now we're limited on both of those or we're limited on all three and we got a limit on strawberries but i will tell you this right here elephant garlic and german white garlic are both of them going to be in fairly short supply we could get all we wanted to get but we will do pre-sales on the uh, elephant garlic next week so go ahead and get those booked go to our website and uh We'll have them on there so that you can order them. Or make, if you're not signed up for our email newsletter, make sure mm -hmm. you're signed up for that and we'll send out notifications. But for fall gardening, you need to get it going. And before you know it, we're going to be pre selling onion plants. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be a little later on. Let's talk about, we're going to start doing a little segment on a customer's garden spotlight. Yep. So I think you got notes over there. You might Let have to. Let me get my notes out. You know how I am So this notes. is an elementary school that has created a garden club and a junior garden program. Yep. Um, Rolando Roman. And it's in Moonsdown Upper Elementary School. Where's that at? Do you remember what state's mm -mm. in? Anyhow, 
you see the pictures right here. It is a great program. So many times we see these school guards go by the wayside, but these people here seem to have got it under control and doing a great job with man. Just look how pretty they this have a, is. The kids get to have a farmer's market. Mm -hmm. And even during the summer, the families of these children volunteer to come in on Saturday and work for an hour. And a lot of the kids have went on to have their own gardens at home. So is that not a great skill? It is. And I think it's what they've done is create this garden club so that people can volunteer and come into it to have that interest. Right. And these kids, they, the garden club meets at 7 in the morning before school starts. Yep. And in, after school. So it's not something during school. So. Mm -hmm. And this is for the program third through fifth grades, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So they cover all different aspects, not just garden, but the whole aspects of, of growing your own mm -hmm. food there. That's mm. interesting. So we're going to try to spotlight your gardens. So send in your pictures. There's a place on the website yep. to do that. Old goat. Old goat. So the old goat's on the set here somewhere. If you find the old goat, then send us in. Put in the comments me. where you find it. And if we draw your name, send us your shipping address to cussserve at hosstools.com. And you'll get a nice little gift sent to you. So here we do with the drawing. I can't look. All right. Karen Skiller. Is that right? Sounds good. Karen, there you are. Karen, send us your shipping address to cussserve at hosstools.com and we'll get you a coded Hoss gift sent in the mail. So if you find the old goat figurine on the set here somewhere, comment and you too could be eligible for one of those wonderful gifts. Corny joke. Corny joke. Yeah, it's better than last week's. All right. Last week was a little rough. Here. I mean, to be honest <laughs> with you, yeah. That was... I know. I didn't get but one comment. Yeah, that was, it was a little bad. What do you call a rabbit with beetles all over it? Well, I got an idea, but why don't we do this right here? Why don't we let you tell us what the answer to the corny joke is by putting the answer in the comments below? Let me read it again. Yeah. What do you call a rabbit with the beetles all over it? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Comment on what you think the answer to the corny joke is. Thank you for joining us. Let um, us know what your fall garden pest issues are. Yeah. If you have any questions, maybe we can help you and answer them. Absolutely. And if you're not growing microgreens, I would suggest you give it a try. Great way to eat clean. Now it's time for you to get off that couch and do something and get dirty.